All right, this is another update about the uh, router table that I'm putting together, and I got the fence uh, built and done. And um, first, I'm going to talk about uh, the cabinet. I'm getting ready to start on the cabinet now that I've finished the fence. And stopped at Home Depot the other day, and I grabbed two sheets of three quarters of an inch plywood that I'm going to be using for it. Uh, the first sheet I got here, this top sheet, is uh, what they call the hardwood plywood. It's a popular plywood, plywood, and um, you know, the nice multiply looking plywood and fairly flat sheets and everything in the store. But it was, um, I think it was just was 42 or 43 dollars for the sheet. And uh, the plywood itself didn't have very thin, uh, it had very thin veneers on the faces of it. So I picked up a sheet of this to try, and there you can see it's only got maybe about a 64th of an inch of veneer on the face. So I'm not I'm not sure you know how good that's going to be or how it's going to sand out or anything else. So I grabbed one sheet of that, and then I also they had this other they called a softwood plywood called a redotta pine I think it was, and I grabbed a sheet of that too, and I'll show you that in a second. And so I'm just you know I just getting it out of my truck here, and the sheets are a little heavy for me to carry down in the shop, so I'm just cutting them up into the sizes that I need. And, you can see that little 20 volt saw has really been handy and the um, clamp there really does good. And here's this other one, the Redotter Pine. This was only like $35 a sheet and it's a multi-core, but it's a softwood plywood they called it. It's made out of pine, but it does have a, um, you know, the veneer on the face of it is probably three times as thick as the veneer on the hardwood one. So I figured I'd grab a sheet of both and um, try them and, you know, just see how they work out and see which one I like better in the end. So, you know, there it is. The bottom side of that one has got one good face on it, and the back side isn't that great, but you can see it's got a really nice veneer on it. And, you know, it was really nice and flat sheet. So, I'll give them both a try, and, you know, we'll see how they work out. And I find if you save these little packing things from that come, uh, things get shipped with, that they work really good for cutting things um, on the back of my truck. And now I'm going to go down to my shop and I'm going to start building the parts for the fence. This is just kind of going back a couple days. And I've got some one inch tooling plate here that I'm cutting up with this uh, saw here, this Evolution Rage 3. And you can see that does a really nice job of cutting that. And just for comparison, I'm going to show you. This is my band saw here. And I got a piece of the same plate on there. You can see in the time I cut through that plate. The band saw barely cuts about an eighth inch of material, so it really, you know, those evolution saws really are quick and um, make no heat or anything. And then once I got the pieces cut, it's time to size them all up. Um, I've got four blocks here that are going to be the same, so I'm squaring them all up. And that's the biggest part of machining anything is uh, just kind of getting everything squared up and started. And once you do that, it's uh, you know just a little machining here and there to get everything and there's a eighth inch pocket I put in there to lock it on the um, piece of aluminum extrusion and that was about the worst cut because you have to be real careful with the little bits binding in the aluminum because it's so soft and sticky but uh, you know basically it's just once you set up and you do one you can do four just as quick so I got those blocks made and now I'm on to a couple motor mount plates here. You can see that power feed really does help when you're squaring up and sizing up materials and, you know, cutting it to the thickness that you need. And then I'm going to go back and start drilling for mounting the motor and stuff. And it's really easy, you know, you set things up and you just swap out plates when you're doing multiple items on a machine like this. So it makes it go really quick. And then I've got a center hole there for the... Um, the motor mount for the coupling to go through so I'm just gonna start with a one inch drill I got here and then I uh, didn't have anything big enough to make it the final size so what I did is I just put on the uh, boring head here and you're able to just bore right through to whatever diameter that you want and then I just set it up you know there it is it does a nice clean hole through there and then I just set it up to do the uh, pocket for the motor also which I'll show you next uh, there it is make that pocket for the motor to lock in you need that to keep everything perfectly centered and you know there it is so there's the uh, motor mount plate pretty much done except for a couple taps that go in the corner of it 
So now I've pretty much got everything uh, done to mount my two screws and my motors there. And um, there you can see it in place. Everything kind of locks together. And um, there's the bearings up there. And the um, lead screws are on there. And um, that uh, piece of extrusion finally showed up. UPS uh, it lost the first one and they uh, shipped out a second one. And there's a big story about that because a couple days after the second one came, the original one actually uh, showed up at my door and the shipping on it had uh, it said delivered delivered and then it said out for delivery so um and the girl my normal girl was back and the package had a note on it this time delivered to the right person uh, because it looked like it had been delivered to the wrong house twice before it got to me so um you know i had to refuse that and i i told the uh, ups driver to give it to her boss that called me and tell her to take it and uh, shove it up her you know what for being so nasty to me on the phone so here i am starting to put everything together um you can see how the coupling goes in there and those are those flexible couplings uh, three eighths on one side for the screw and uh the quarter on the other side for the motor and i did grind a flat on the end of the screw there so that everything would lock in there good and then the two motors just uh screw on like that and um you know, I pretty much have mirror images there. And now I'm going to be cutting this uh, this extrusion in half. It's amazing how it was cheap, much cheaper to buy one four-foot section than two two-foot sections. So, you know, basically I'm just cutting it right in the middle. And I thought the saw would cut four inches, but it turns out it'll only cut a little bit over three and a half. So I couldn't make it all the way through at one time, so I just had to lay it flat anyway and cut it. Because I was trying to, you know, keep the saw marks the shortest direction, but it did come out pretty good in the end. The saw did a really wonderful job of cutting it. Those evolution saws are great for uh, stuff like this. And then I need some spacers for tightening the fence down, and I'm just cutting some one-inch aluminum bar here, and I just using the other saw here to show you. It's a does a much raggedy job. It does a real raggedy job compared to the evolution. And then over to the old uh, South Bend lathe, and this lathe is definitely older than me, but it, you know, it still runs really good, and it's a really handy thing to have for um, making anything. It's probably one of the basic tools you can use in your shop. But you can get these things really cheap, and, uh, and I'm sure this thing will last another hundred years or the way it's built. So I'm just starting to to square things up on the edge, square all the cuts up good, and. Um, cut pieces down to the exact length and stuff and then these need some quarter inch holes drilled through them for the uh, bolts that hold the fence so I'm just gonna drill a couple holes through them here and um, one of them has a uh, section that goes through the vacuum area so I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit to you know be a little smoother flow through there so I've got those three uh, fence brackets made up for locking that in place yeah, you can see they came out pretty nice. And, and for the vacuum hose hookup, I've got a uh, screw-in uh, fitting for the vacuum hose. I have to machine off the flange on and, uh, you know, another little tube on the other side. So, Lathe does a really good job on this also. And then it was time to go back to the fence and uh, put the holes through for the um, mounting of the extrusion. Now that I've got all the locations of everything in place, so... I just started with some center drill to uh, drill the one side and now I got like a six inch aircraft bit to go through so I got a pretty nice straight hole right through the um, the entire tube there so I can have the um, knob on the back and everything will line up. And then I wound up opening it up with one of these step bits. I needed a one inch diameter on the one side and you know there you can see I got that in and there's those tubes that I made they go through and they actually um, lock the fence in place without squeezing on the tube. And then it's time to take one of those new hole saws and put a hole in there for the vacuum because half of this fence is going to be used for a vacuum. Uh, just to keep that all out of the way and keep that neat and clean looking. So I had to drill a um, 2 and 5 eighths hole in there. And there's a vacuum fitting that's just going to be uh, glued in there. I'm going to use some silicone cement to hold that in place when I put it together. And then the hose, this is like a threaded type fitting that the hose just um, 
threads right on it and locks in place there so that'll be a nice clean setup so here it is I'm not going to show you painting everything and you know sanding it down and cleaning it up but everything's ready to go now and there's my optical switches I still have to mount them for the um, end of travel and the uh, zeroing and there's the uh, I've got power supply and stuff and some caps for the end of the tubing there and um, finally got my zero backlash nuts here and they work pretty nice and you can see all the parts are now painted and pretty much finished and uh, it's just kind of like a kit ready to be put together I just spread it all out to make sure that I had everything you know together when I started pretty amazing there's like over a hundred pieces for this auto fence and uh, you know not many you have to make but just if you include all the hardware and stuff to put it together so there it is and I'm gonna you know just start putting it together a little bit at a time here um, everything's been kind of dry fit test fit already so I know it's going to go together with no problems I'm really not going to, you know, go through the exact assembly of this because, uh, you know, I doubt anybody's going to make the exact same thing. But I can kind of show you how the assemblies go together. Um, there's a bearing block on one side support for the uh, fence. And here's one that I'm going to be putting together for the other side. And, you know, basically the um, those bearings come in the aluminum housings and they just uh, screw in from the back side there. And then I'm just going to slide it on the shaft to make sure everything's perfectly aligned before I tighten the screws down there. And, you know, I get a nice smooth uh, roll on that thing there. And then I've got the, uh, the bearing blocks for the lead screw. And, you know, they do mount right on those couple of blocks there. They, those are the ones I showed you uh, I was machining a little while ago. So I'm just going to, you know, mount them on there. And uh, there's actually a mirror set left hand and right hand ones of them and you know here's the one drive assembly on this side and you can pretty much see how it all just kind of fits together there and then on the other side I've got a um, you know pretty much the same thing just mirrored over and you saw originally in the first uh, video about how they mount to the tabletop and everything so I don't want to you know go through repeating all that and I did set these up with indicators I put them together so everything was perfectly in line and um, moving straight you can see I made it so that I can unlock the fence from the lead screw just by taking that uh, knob off there and just slide the fence off if I have to get it out of the way for you know something really big and then you can see how there's a groove in there and everything just locks right back together to you know get the lead screw driving again there and this is what the top looks like. My uh, feather boards finally came. And I like that nice safety one I got in the center. Um, I got them from Peachtree. And there you can see the knobs and the um, those hold down brackets and everything that go through it. So this is, uh, you know, pretty much fences, you know, for the most part done here. And there's the, uh, the vacuum hookup right there where the hose is going to be going in and teeing into the other one up around the router. And then, of course, I had to... Uh, print out a some stickers for it and you know this is the first one I still have several to come once I get the electronics worked out and you can see that cap fit in a tube really nice and got my auto fence on there and there'll still be more going up on top of the fence here there'll be some switches and there may be a tablet and there um, be some lighting and stuff like that and right now I have a rat's nest with my Arduino and my motor drivers and stuff I've just got some test uh, software set up that I you know I kind of came across and put together from stuff I found online to be able to start moving it so this basically is the first time of the fence moving and I've got it set up so it's uh, it works on a joystick um, actually the limit switches will stop it too if you use them but I don't have them hooked up right now and you can see it's got three speeds. This is the fastest speed, so it's not very fast right at the moment. But I, once I get the software figured out, I should be able to speed that up. And I'm actually going to, I was going to try to use an app with a tablet. But once I get into it, I think I'm trying to use uh, some buttons for different index numbers and just the overall jog feature on it. So this is, you know, basically the start. And I do have a lot of learning to do when it comes to the software to get it to do exactly what I want 
but it's extremely rigid. I mean, you can push on it all you want. You won't move it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's got plenty of power to move. And um, once the motor's locked, it's locked right in place here with no clamping or anything else. So I'm really happy with the way it came out so far. Now I'm still waiting from MLCS to hear about their auto lift if it'll fit the Milwaukee router, which I, they didn't think it would. So I may wind up having to build my own router lift, but I do have another motor controller and I've got enough power in my power supply to run it. And you can see I've got three different settings out of uh, jogs that I can go for. I can, you know, get it down to about 1000 and then um, go a little bit faster and then... I've got the fastest one right now, but you know, this is really rough and it will all be fine-tuned in the future And there's also some material support wings gonna go on the outside of that fence past the table So you know, I just thought I'd share with you up to this point to show you that I do have my table moving and now It's just a matter of uh, you know Depending on what software I come up with and uh, what buttons I'm going to use you know try to get it all working together and um but the next thing I have to do is uh, start the cabinet build to get all my, uh, you know, to get the cabinet done and all the rat's nest of electronics worked out in there too. So this has been a real fun project so so far. I just wish I had more spare time to work on it with all the other stuff going on in my yard and garden right now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.